Hi, I'm Pam from the Birch Cottage blog. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Previously, I shared with you how to make these five inch cotton clothesline rope coasters. They're super easy to make and once you make one, they're kind of addictive and you may find yourself wanting to make lots of them. And you may also be asking yourself, well, what can I do with these besides just stitch them in this plain, boring, maybe looking design? There's plenty you can do. Like I shared before, you can use colored thread to kind of brighten up your uh, coasters. But one of my favorite things to do with these cotton clothesline rope coasters is to machine embroider designs on them. Now this particular design, I thought was gonna work well on these uh, coasters, but I did have some issues with it. There was some holly and berries in here that should have been embroidered, but I went through four needles breaking. So I canceled it and I skipped over that part and then continued the rest of the design. So one of the very, uh, probably most important things to take into consideration when you're selecting a design to embroider on these cotton clothesline rope coasters is thread density or your thread count. You really wanna choose a design that isn't quite as dense as say where this cup is. And this design, like I said, where the berries were, happened to be right on the center of the coaster where it's pretty thick anyway because of the extra stitching I did at the beginning of uh, stitching this together. So just keep in mind that you want to choose a design that maybe isn't quite as dense as this design. So I guess you could call this an example of what not to do. But let's take a look anyway of how you're going to hoop these coasters and machine embroider on them. All right, let's take a look at the supplies that you'll need to machine embroider on these cotton clothesline rope coasters. Of course, you're going to need a cotton clothesline coaster. I made these and they are five inches across. But besides your coasters, and you can watch my video tutorial on how to make these, I'll leave a link below for that, uh, you will need an embroidery design. Like I said, I chose this Winter Blend Hot Cocoa Designs that I purchased from Designs by Juju. And here in the middle was right in the middle of my coaster and it was a little too dense for that part of my project. So I probably should have gone into my embroidery software and just removed that from the design or moved my design up or down on my coaster. But anyway, this design is really a little thick a uh, little dense for these coasters, but this is the one that I've used. So you'll need your uh, embroidery design. And of course, you're gonna need the appropriate embroidery thread. This thread is Hemingworth Poly Select in Christmas Red, but it's mostly what I wanted to show you was the brand of thread, it's Hemingworth. Um, I've also used Bro Thread that I purchased on uh, Amazon. Uh, I really like Salky. Man, that's a beautiful uh, thread. But you'll need embroidery machine thread to match whatever your design is. I use my standard embroidery machine needle. Um, I did use a 5 by 7 hoop uh, for this coaster and it fit perfectly within the hoop. So you will need some tear away or wash away a stabilizer. You will need a pair of scissors and you'll also want some kind of basting or spray adhesive. I like this spray and bond um, basting adhesive. It's sewable. It works really well with my embroidery machine and my sewing machine and I use this a lot. It's a temporary hold so it kind of goes away after a while. Now about the embroidery design. I see a lot of questions on some of the embroidery Facebook groups and things that I belong to with people having issues with the, getting the design off their USB, their thumb drive and into their machine. One of the things that I have discovered about my machine anyway, I have the Brother PE770 
and uh, it's a five by seven uh, single needle embroidery machine. But I have found that if I have multiple designs on my thumb drive, that it has a difficult time, especially if I have folders on there, and there is a limit to how many of those designs it will actually display. So I have gotten into the habit, I keep all my designs on the hard drive of my computer. I also keep a backup on my backup drive. And I only put on my thumb drive, on my flash drive here, uh, what designs I'm currently working on. And then when I go to load the next design for my next project that I'm working on, I delete anything off of here that I'm not currently using. It saves my uh, embroidery machine from getting confused about what designs to load, and I don't have any of those issues with the design loading properly into my embroidery machine. Again, that's my workaround for my brother PE770. Your machine may be completely different, may work differently, but I just wanted to talk about that for a minute. Okay, so we talked about you need an embroidery design, you need your hoop, your embroidery machine, your tearaway, tearaway or washaway stabilizer. I usually use tearaway stabilizer. You'll also want some adhesive spray, um, a pair of scissors. I like to snip my jump threads as I go, so I keep those pretty handy with my embroidery machine. And of course, you need your blank, already sewn five inch rope coasters, and that's it. So let's take a look at how to embroider on these cotton clothesline rope coasters. For the supplies, of course, you're going to need your embroidery design, your thread, uh, your embroidery hoop. I'm using a 5 by 7 embroidery hoop in this example. Uh, some stabilizer, you can use tear away or water soluble, some scissors, some embroidery scissors. And of course, you may also want to use some adhesive spray. And then the first thing that we're going to do is to hoop our stabilizer. So cut out a piece of stabilizer big enough for your hoop. And then line that up and secure it well so it's nice and taut in the embroidery hoop. And then once we have our stabilizer um, nice and taut in our hoop, we're going to get ready for the placement of our coaster. I like to print out a template and use my uh, cutting mat to kind of line it up and line my embroidery hoop up. And then I insert a pen in the center of my coaster um, after I apply some adhesive spray to the back of the coaster and then line it up with the center of the design and use that pen as uh, my guide to help me center it. I make sure I have the loop for my coaster up at the top where I like to have it. And you can also place the design on top of your coaster to make sure you have it lined up properly. You can also base stitch the coaster to your stabilizer. I don't normally do this, but I wanted to show you that it is another way to um, add some stability to the design because the coaster is so much thicker than your stabilizer. And then the next thing we do is we just load the embroidery hoop uh, onto my machine. I have the Brother PE, um, sorry, the Brother PE 770. And it does have a limitation of five by seven, five inches by seven inch design. Um, so I have my first thread all loaded in my machine. I'm going to thread it through. And this machine does a great job of uh, threading the needle. So once I have that all threaded, um, I will load my design. I keep my design on a USB or my flash drive and a thumb drive, whatever you call it. And I load that into my machine. And when I have my design centered exactly where I want it, make any adjustments to make sure I have it centered. And then I am ready to start my design. I like to hold on to the thread at the beginning, press my start button let the design make a few stitches, and then I pause it and I cut off that beginning tail of that thread. Also, while the design is embroidering, um, 
when I have jump threads after I changed the color of my thread I um, also like to trim those jump threads and you'll see that here that's what I'm doing I've changed over to another color I'm going to trim off those jump threads after it makes a few stitches and the same thing with the beginning of the color change I'll let it stitch a few stitches and then trim off that beginning thread and here I'm using a design with water soluble stabilizer I just unhoop my design I trim away the stabilizer oh first I have the basting stitches on my coaster and you can use a seam ripper to remove those or just kind of pull them out I just use the tip of my scissors to help me loosen the threads and I like to pull them out rather than rip out the seam but you do what feels uh, most comfortable to you so I remove those basting stitches and then I take my fabric scissors and I trim the uh, water soluble stabilizer or even if I'm using cut away or tear away I like to tear it away or cut it away as close to the design as possible so I have less that I have to remove and then once I have the stabilizer the water soluble stabilizer cut off all I have to do is take it over to my sink and I'll run a little bit of water over it and rub it with my fingers and all that stabilizer will just dissolve off of there it's really nice here I am trimming the jump threads off the back of the coaster And again, I like to use my embroidery scissors. They're kind of curved and they let you get really close to the, to the threads and the fabric. I also keep a little waste can beside my embroidery machine that I put all the little threads in as I'm trimming away the threads. Hi, was that fun and easy or what? I told you it would be. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to embroider on cotton clothesline rope coasters. These would make a great gift. You know, you could put a set together of four, six, eight, whatever you wanted. And you could even make a holder for these out of clothesline rope, kind of like a basket for your clothesline rope coasters. But you can use seasonal designs, you can embroider monograms. The possibilities are truly endless once you see how easy and fun these are to make. And it just makes such cute customize one-of-a-kind handmade gifts. I sure hope you like this video. If so, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and come visit me over on the Birch Cottage blog and subscribe to my newsletter. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. So here are some of the other coasters that I have embroidered on. These three designs are from an embroidery library and I'll have a link to those here at the end of the video and I'll also leave it in the description below. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel so that you'll be the first to know when there are new video tutorials made available. And don't forget to come visit me over on the Birch Cottage blog and subscribe to my newsletter so you'll have access to all sorts of freebies. Thanks again and happy embroidering.